G'day Melbourne Cubbers, Lou Dub with the world's most best Melbourne Cup preview. If you're a once a year punter, welcome or welcome back. We're going to take a look at every runner with pictures of the horse itself and the colours the jockey will wear. And if you're wanting to look at the horse's form, we've got that as well. I will advise to please take a look at official guides before betting as there can be the odd typo in my productions. Here's a brief look at the field. Valban is now the favourite after Buggeroo drew barrier 21. Down the list we go, very briefly. You could pause the screen if you like. But now we will take a look at the weather forecast for Flemington and it looks like continuing dry weather. Monday, a 30% chance of rain. Tuesday, 20% chance of rain. But both days predicting less than one millimetre if there is actually rain. So I've done the form for a good four or good three track. A little advice on the terminology. Spell means three months without an official race and the form displayed on screen is color coded to indicate the condition of the track that day. And the prep graph, an original concept from Lou Dub, just illustrates how close to the winner the subject horse was in each race. The red line indicating where first place was and obviously anything beyond the red line indicates how far the horse won by. Okay, let's get stuck into the 24 horse Melbourne Cup field. Oh, just beware, there are four horses wearing the same blue and yellow colours of Buggeroo. In those cases, refer to the official guides to find the distinguishing cap colour. Valban. There is no doubt in my mind Valban has put a better collection of five prep races together this year than last year when he started favourite for the Melbourne Cup. His last start, he was two and a quarter lengths second at Group 1 level in the Irish St. Ledger behind the world's best two-miler, Kiprios. He actually profiles very similar to Spanish Mission in the 2022 Melbourne Cup. Spanish Mission ran third in Very Elegance Cup and Valban has had three of the same races in his prep as Spanish Mission. The Yorkshire Cup, the Ascot Gold Cup and the Lonsdale Cup. His ratings are slightly below that of Spanish Mission but he gets into the Melbourne Cup with 1.5 kilograms less and his trainer Willie Mullins has changed things around a little this year and so we can expect a better performance from Valban. He's a big, big chance. Buggeroo. This five and a half year old gelding started his racing career overseas. He'd had 11 starts and not raced beyond 2,000 metres until arriving here in late 2023. In his autumn campaign earlier this year, under Chris Waller, he had four starts for one placing and three times unplaced. He tried his hand at 2,400 metres in the Tancred Stakes in that autumn campaign and finished 1.8 lengths fifth, so not disgraced. He was second favourite that day and appeared to fade on his run. Now, this spring, he's had a super campaign. Two wins, two seconds from five starts. It seems like he's gone to another level this spring. And if you're like me, you might think two miles is not his optimum distance. But even if it's not, watch him run past his opposition in the Caulfield Cup and then name a horse from that field that beats him in the Melbourne Cup. I can't. They're all carrying the same weights. Circle of Fire. He was the Melbourne Cup favourite up until his first start back from Spell when he finished 20 lengths last. Since then, the best he could do was 6.5 lengths ninth in the Turnbull Stakes. And just to confirm he was not worth betting on in the Melbourne Cup, he was 13 lengths tenth in the Caulfield Cup most recently. So you're asking how come he was favourite? Well, he won the Sydney Cup back in April this year. Impressively. But I won't be betting on him, and I think his owners have a big decision to make after the cup. Do they turn this four-and-a-half-year-old entire into a gelding? Snip, snip. Warp Speed, the Japanese contender. He comes to Australia with a similar profile to that of Breakup, last year's failed Japanese runner. The big selling point for this horse was his fifth-place finish in the Tenno Show Spring earlier this year. That's Japan's premier two-mile race. However, he's had a run already in Australia, and it was a big fail. He finished miles back in the Caulfield Cup, and looking at his graph, that was very out of character. On Caulfield Cup day before the race, it was said that he looked like he could improve by the um, yard analyst, the person that looks at the condition of the horse. So he wasn't fully fit, and another excuse is the soft track, which he had to contend with in the Caulfield Cup, but he won't be getting my money. 
Kovalika. This five-year-old gelding has always had plenty of admirers and that dates back to his Queensland Guineas and Queensland Derby wins in early 2023. Since then, he has not won a race. He's never run further than 2,400 metres of the Queensland Derby. That was in May of 2023. On multiple occasions, this guy has raced at Group 1 level and while not winning, didn't disgrace himself. But those races were at 1,600, 1,500 and 2,000 metres. Now he's stepping up to 3,200 metres, two miles. Look at this prep. He's gone 1,400, 1,600, 1,900, and then 2,000 metres. What would be the training methodology for now jumping up to two miles? Have they been giving him work to extend his stamina? This is two miles. Trained by Chris Waller, but I'm sure the owners have had plenty of influence in the decision to run Kovalika. Sharp and smart. Well, this New Zealand Derby winner of 2023 has taken a slightly unconventional path, starting his Melbourne Cup campaign over 1,200 metres in his homeland of New Zealand. Both his first two starts, he carried big weights. He was well beaten in the Group 1 Turnbull over 2,000, but he, he did put in a red light flashing run in the Mooney Valley Gold Cup, finishing much closer to the winner. It's a question of, was it just his lack of fitness that caused him to slightly fade on his run over the closing stages, or is he just not the horse he was when in his three-year-old season? His trainer Graham Rogerson has been involved with Melbourne Cup winners before, and he sounded quietly confident of a good run in the Melbourne Cup. Just fine. This horse was being set for the Melbourne Cup last year, but his form went out the window at the wrong time. This year, the six and a half year old former UK runner has made the field and will get his first chance over the two miles of the Melbourne Cup. His graph is a bit concerning. Up and down, up and down. In his last start, he finished last when he was fourth favourite in a 10 horse field. Land Legend, a French-bred four-and-a-half-year-old gelding. He's had great success since arriving in Australia late last year. He won the $500,000 ATC St. Ledger in his only start in Australia last year and didn't return to the track until August. He showed some good signs in the Kingston Town over 2,000 metres and next time out he won the 2,400-metre Group 1 Metropolitan in a photo finish with Zardozzi. Next up, he carried 53 kilograms in the Caulfield Cup and finished a reputable third, albeit five lengths behind Buggeroo. Both Land Legend and Buggeroo carry the same weight in the Melbourne Cup. Can he improve by five lengths? Well, there was talk that he got quite worked up waiting in the barriers before the Caulfield Cup as the race was delayed when one of the horses broke through the starting gates. I'll have a link to the stewards report in the video description. Absurd. He's been given a handy barrier and a three-time Melbourne Cup winning jockey. His win in the Chester Stakes this year is better, in my opinion, than his win in the Ebor last year for the fact he accelerated away from Keys Chorister, who raced at Group 1 level in the UK earlier this year. How much better? Hmm. His first run on the flat this year had alarm bells ringing. Fourth in a five-horse race, the Irish St. Ledger Trial but the performance in Chester was heartening. He's had a similar amount of mileage put it into him as in 2023, where he had roughly 12,900 metres preparing for the Cup. This year, if we exclude the jumps race in late De December, where he was pulled up, he's run roughly 12,300 with two hurdles races and two flat races. Just like Valban, I think he's in a good place to improve on the seventh place he picked up last year. Athabaskan, a five-and-a-half-year-old gelding, he had eight starts in France for one win and five placings before being sent to Australia. In 2023, he was very close to making the Melbourne Cup field, but he returned for an autumn campaign in Sydney, where his best result was a gallant second in the two-mile Sydney Cup. This spring, he's had four starts and was most disappointing two starts back in the 2,400-metre Metropolitan. I can't find a good excuse for that, apart from it being only his first third start of the prep and he was forced to work hard early. Strange because his next start was his most impressive. That was his win in the ATC St Ledger. So how do you go from eight lengths tenth to winning? Well he was only about four lengths from third in the Metropolitan so it's believable that his better result was down to fitness and weaker opposition i.e there was no land legend or Zardozzi to compete with. Still I would give him a realistic chance of a minor place and 
given he drops 5.5 kilos from the ATC St Ledger into the Melbourne Cup. Knight's Choice, a surprise nomination. His last start fifth in the Bendigo Cup did appear luckless, but he certainly wasn't unlucky when 14th in the Caulfield Cup. Hard to back. It was a soft track, but he'd had a win on soft ground. He actually strung together four wins on the trot in his three-year-old season. In the winter this year, he was second in the Group 2 Q22 over 2200, but since that race in June, he's been raced over 2400 four times and never finished closer than third. Two miles will be another step up. Akita Sushi. He was ordinary in last year's Melbourne Cup. I was shocked that they bothered given he ran 12th in the Caulfield Cup. Anyway, it's a different story this year. He only returned to the track in August and it was certainly a pretty humble start to his campaign. 11 lengths and 9 lengths off the winner in those 2,000 metre races. But he put in a solid effort for second in the Group 2 Herbert Power at 40 to 1 and his last start was a confidence boosting win over 2,500 metres. He's got a very light weight and an in-form rider. From barrier 10, he should be able to take his regular place on the pace or leading. He's a good chance. One smooth operator. This guy came to my attention with his win in the Northumberland Plate in late June. That was over 3,319 metres and on an all-weather track. Then he failed in the Ebor handicap, but never really had a chance to figure, being a long way back in a big field. You can see a replay of that race on this channel. He was actually about a nose behind Sea King in that race, car carrying a kilo more and with less luck. His next start was a bit of a black mark on his copybook, seven lengths fourth in a small field, and I was very surprised to see Connections send him out to Australia. But they were right. He put in a huge run to win the Geelong Cup. Can he back it up? He's never won two races in a row, but he's never run two races in Australia. He'll benefit from a dry track too. Sardozzi, the VRC Oaks winner of 2023 and ATC Oaks runner-up in April this year. I was surprised they followed through and ran her in the Melbourne Cup. She built throughout the prep and once over 2,400 metres, she did look the part. That said, in the Caulfield Cup, she had every chance and although she finished fourth in an 18-horse field, she was a long way behind Buggeroo and in the Melbourne Cup, she gets no favours weight-wise when comparing with Buggeroo. Surprisingly, she raced on Saturday over a mile, and there she ran a reputable fifth, 2.5 lengths from the winner, a tissue. An interesting ploy by trainer James Cummings, whose grandfather Bart trained the most Melbourne Cup winners in history. Bart was famous for giving them some hard work close to Cup Day. Maybe that will bring out the best in Zardozzi. C. King, he's suddenly a $10 chance. Prior to his first start in Australia, this five and a half year old had never been tried at black type level. He'd just concentrated on handicap racing. He was sixth in this year's Ebor handicap back in August. That's usually not a great standard, and though sometimes the change of environment can have a huge effect on a horse, I still find it hard to see this fella winning the Melbourne Cup. The Bendigo Cup has not got a record of providing us with Melbourne Cup winners. And even in this year where we have a lack of quality, I don't see him winning, especially considering he's had just six days between races. Valiant King. Suddenly this four and a half year old gelding from the Northern Hemisphere is into the Melbourne Cup field. He arrived in Australia last year and recorded a sixth place finish in the Caulfield Cup. He hadn't got back to the track until September this year and he's only had three runs leading into the Melbourne Cup. He's finished 16th, 10th and 9th and he's gone from 13 lengths from the winner to 6.9 lengths from the winner and again 13 lengths from the winner. Good luck to Craig Newitt who's been chosen to steer him. Fancy Man. This former England-based stayer came to Annabel Neesham in early 2023 and was actually nominated for last year's Melbourne Cup, but failed to make the field. This year, he's a little bit better and the opposition is a little bit weaker, in some respect due to the administration of racing in Victoria, Australia's wokest state. Anyway, Fancy Man's last run was his best run in Australia, finishing sixth in the Caulfield Cup. He'll be fitter, he won't be overdone having only had three runs this prep, but is he really up to the two miles? He's had one race beyond a mile and a half, and that was the 2022 Ebor Handicap, over roughly 2,800 metres. In that, he was eight lengths eighth. 
interpretation. This will be his third crack at the Melbourne Cup. Last year he caught a lot of people's attention with a strong finishing sixth in the Cup. After the race last year he stayed off the track until June and since then he's been slowly building with a race each month until October where he's had those two mile and a half races and quite obviously caught our eyes with another late burst to finish second in the Geelong Cup. The same jockey will be on board as was on him last year in last year's Cup and the recent Geelong Cup. It's Theo Nugent who actually rode high emotion to a surprise third in the 2022 Melbourne Cup. Barrier 14 is no great issue. It will race somewhere worse than midfield anyway. A good place chance. Man Zoys, another runner that I'm surprised to see in the field. He's got a decent barrier. Declan Bates is actually going to ride him one kilogram over his 50 kilogram handicap. He's never been too far away in all his races this prep. Group 3 and Group 2, not far away, and against a lot of his Melbourne Cup opposition. Another positive is he carries less than he did in his last two races. The big problem is that he was tried over two miles in the Sydney Cup earlier this year and just seemed to hit a wall about 600 metres out. He was the Victoria Derby winner of 2022, but that means nothing on Tuesday. Mostly cloudy, he comes to the Melbourne Cup off possibly the worst result of his racing career. I've watched this horse closely and I think he needs a decent spell. He ran 6th in this year's Sydney Cup in April, then 2nd in the Andrew Ramsden in May over 2,800 metres, then 2nd in the Brisbane Cup in June, that's 3,200 metres as well. He had barely any time off, returning to trials in August and since has clocked 3 below par results this campaign. It's a pity he's out of form, as the two miles is not something that he's unfamiliar with. Positivity, a four-year-old mare that was second in this year's New Zealand Oaks. Since returning in the spring, she's had four starts, and things started well with a second and a win, but since she stepped up to the 2500, her form has dipped. I'm surprised they've put her in the race, given she was seventh in the Bart Cummings, and lost by an even larger distance, five lengths in the Mooney Valley Gold Cup. There really were no excuses. No hard luck stories. Her graph tells the story. St. George. He's come into $20 from 50 to 1 earlier in the week. Since he became a certain starter, that's been the trigger for the money. His form doesn't scream Melbourne Cup winner, being ninth in the Bart Cummings and 5th in the Mooney Valley Gold Cup, but his last run was definitely better than his run on soft ground in the Bart Cummings. He has raced over 2,900 metres and won, which is better than most, but he was in his own age group last year against three-year-olds when he recorded that good result. The turnoff for me is that he's always been fancied, even over the shorter trips of 2,000 metres, starting at $4.80 and then in the Bart coming starting at $6.50. He hasn't lived up to the billing. Yet. The Map, the six-year-old mare, won her way into the Melbourne Cup back in May with a win over 2,800 metres at Flemington in the Andrew Ramsden, a golden ticket race. Prior to that, she'd been second in the Adelaide Cup over two miles in March. She had a nice long spell, and she's come back with four starts leading into the Melbourne Cup, her first on the 24th of August. Looking at her graph, she's never been too close to winning, but she hasn't been miles away either. A tough subject to decipher, the map. If you contrast this prep with her autumn prep when she eventually won the Andrew Ramsden to qualify, she was always finishing very close to the winner, within one or two lengths. This spring, she's never been closer than 3.7 lengths, back in her first start over 1,400 metres. But you can argue she's been racing against better opposition in these prep races, and she will get a 4 kilogram reduction from her last race, the Geelong Cup. Still, she's not convinced me. Trust in you. Well, this New Zealand-based stayer has made the trip over to the Big Smoke and I'm sure they've had the Melbourne Cup as a target, but he gets to the 24-horse field due to a raft of forced withdrawals by the VRC who are dead keen on impressing Larry Fink with some ESG credits. But this guy just doesn't stack up. He's been tried at two miles earlier this year in the Auckland Cup and he failed there against weaker opposition. Look, his last start wasn't hopeless, and he drops 7.5 kilos for the Melbourne Cup. Unfortunately for him, the horse that beat him by 2.8 lengths that day also drops 5.5 kilos. 
All right, a quick look at the track, Flemington Racecourse. The field of 24 will run about 1,000 metres before the first turn, giving plenty of time for runners to find a settling posse, but many a Melbourne Cup hope has been dashed before the first turn. Finally, we get to some Melbourne Cup tips from the newspaper pundits. Absurd, proving very popular, as is one smooth operator. As for myself, I'm nowhere near as confident as I was last year, but I'm going to vouch for Absurd, who was decent last year, and with a little improvement, he just may give Irish trainer Willie Mullins the Melbourne Cup he's been chasing. I'll throw in his other runner, Valban, and then Land Legend. Enjoy the Melbourne Cup. Leave comments, subscribe, etc, etc.